when there's a protector part of yourself, there's part of your psyche that's basically built a wall around the memory, it's built a wall around this emotion, and there's a lot of shame or fear involved in going here. This one thing keeps coming up and you're blocked every time you try to go into it. And if you're struggling with you know, doing your completion process, and then you get to the point, when's the first time I felt this way, and just crickets. Stick to the end of this video, because I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do so that you can get the memory that's the most needed one for you right now. Hey, I'm Lauren. I'm a healing and manifestation coach here to help you make your life the picture of your dreams. So the three main reasons why it's hard to get into the memory. One, there's a general feeling that negative emotion isn't okay. Just habituated over time, not not being validated for having your emotions or getting in trouble for having emotions or being ostracized for the way you feel. And so getting into that initial feeling signature relative to the, cur your, the current um, situation that's bothering you is kind of hard to get into in the first place to like even just validate that you're right to have that feeling. And that will keep you from um, going into the, um, the layers underneath that feeling, the vulnerability, the sadness, underneath the anger or the fear, underneath the frustration. And, and so that's, that's the first reason. The second reason it's hard to tap into a memory, say the first thing isn't an issue, You're ta you've tapped into the feeling, you haven't felt the desire underneath it, the thing that you want. And that's, that's really key because you want to land. So at it, it first with a negative emotion, it's like, no, this isn't fair. I don't like this is happening, blah, 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 right? And, and that keeps us sometimes away from actually recognizing what, we, what we're wanting um, because we're trying to make the bad thing stop and go away in our head that we've, we kind of have forgotten how to, well, just because the desire was impossible to attain. So thinking about what we wanted wasn't, um, something that are, isn't something our mind is conditioned to do again when we have negative emotion. What is it I want in this? What is this feeling telling me that I want right now? The third thing is that this particular emotion, a particular emotion or trigger has been so habituated to shut off due to the degree of the trauma that there's like protector mechanisms within you that keep you from actually remembering so that you don't have to remember it, so you don't, so you don't have to go back to that tortured moment, whatever it was. Now, actually, I will say a fourth one. What about the mind just tries to like think logically what should be a memory here? And so this is something that I would say everybody does, because when is the first time I felt this way? We're gonna, we're gonna say, hmm, I wonder when that was, and we're gonna think back into it. What happens is our brain abandons the, uh, the I'm not gonna think about what I want and it goes into the chronology of your life. And so you, you lose the feeling signature. It's like, I don't know, like you're having an orgasm, let's say an emotion gasm, and then you start thinking about dinner or something. I don't know, bad analogy, but it's like that. It's so you, you're popped out of the feeling. If you are enjoying the video, like, subscribe, share with anybody who's struggling through doing a completion process, what you can do for each of those scenarios. The first problem that we can't feel emotion in general for the next three or four days notice emotion and sit with a feeling every time you feel bad when i was learning the completion process i literally just took a blanket put it over my head every time i felt bad took myself away from people and sat there and was like what is this oh my god what is this what is this i, w I don't want to feel this way but I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna notice and then i would do the emotional vipassana also an affirmation, a positive affirmation of, I get to be a person. I get to be my own person because you're not going to feel like you get to be your own person if you don't get to have negative emotion. And so it's going to be a process of giving yourself a few days to sit with your feelings and then come at it again. That's going to be the fix to problem number one. Number two problem was we're not going deep enough into the emotion. We need to go into that layer of what's my desire? What am I wanting here? And that's probably the easiest one. That's when you're like really ready to kick the whole party off. If you're at that level and that's your problem, no biggie. The, the problem is that you can't go deep into the vulnerability, which you're gonna need to get into 
in order to get the answer, when is the first time I felt this way? You can think about some of those scenarios that you've thought of in the past, get in touch with your desire in that moment. What am I wanting now that I'm not having? What's this feeling trying to tell me that I want? What's this try feeling trying to tell me I don't want? You kind of need to get more indignant and then that'll help you get vulnerable. But you have to allow yourself to have indignance first. That's not fair. I want blah, blah, blah. So for the third one, when there's a protector trying to keep you from, in your own mind, trying to actually keep you literally from that memory and there's been some kind of like psychic wall, um, psyche wall inside you that's kept you from um, landing on that memory ever, right, so far. And um, oftentimes the emotions that that stirred up. But if this is the issue you're having, let's say it's not number one, you can feel your feelings. Let's say it's not number two, you are hitting that vulnerable spot, you know what it is you want. But then you're blocked and it just feels really weird because you're like, this makes no sense. I, I'm so in touch with what I feel and I'm so giving myself permission to have this. And on a daily basis, I'm allowing myself, not shaming myself out of how I feel and maybe you're even in touch with your higher self and you're really great holding space for yourself and being that presence and doing the affirmations and your life is going pretty good except this one damn thing keeps coming up and you're blocked every time you try to go into it so this is problem number three when there's a protector part of yourself there's part of your psyche that's basically built a wall around the memory it's built a wall around this emotion and there's a lot of shame involved in or fear involved in going here ask yourself is it safe is it okay if i go into this memory so you're kind of asking your inner being trust that trust that intuition and give yourself permission to say no it's not okay to go into this memory because that is going to be really validating to the protector honor that here's a solution chances are on your healing journey right now you're in a hurry and you're gonna to have to be pa more patient because what's gonna be needed is that you allow yourself to not go as far back in time. That pool of water is hot, is hot lava. Well, then what memory is similar enough to this? Ask your nervous system, your body, your psyche, your subconscious. Well, what's the next closest thing that I can kind of like start getting used to validating this thing, okay? and that might take you to a teenage memory. That might be what is offered to your subconscious in that moment when you say, well, what memory is the closest? And then you're like, well, pff, that just comes up. Do not say, oh, well, I was 17. So that's a reflection. So it doesn't count. Let yourself go into the 17 because the completion process is can be a series of completion processes until you get to the memory that's the um, root trauma. It works like a charm. You go into that one and validate that one. This is a workaround. Okay. The solution to number four is the mind just tries to like think logically what should be a memory here. Go back into your body. I know that sounds really cliche, but that is how you do it. What is the feeling signature? What is its shape? What is its color? What would it sound like? All those things that you're asking yourself in your emotional vipassana and step one, go back into it. Because you, what you wanna do is switch from analytic mind to sensing mind. The sensing mind feels like when you're listening for a sound, right? You're not thinking, hmm, I wonder where that sound's coming from. Your ear is like really engaged. Same thing with this sense into your body what's it feel like the 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 dumb things of like what color is it it doesn't matter it's not like oh the color is red so that represents anger no it might not the reason we're asking for the color is because it creates a state of listening it creates a state of inner listening is it when you have to like determine what color an emotion is you you are not analytical anymore we're trying to access the subconscious. So there's doorways into the subconscious. The analytical mind is the, is the door out of the subconscious. It's a direct path away. It's like the subconscious is a room and let's say you're in it. And then as soon as your analytical mind comes in, you've literally, you've like le figuratively left the room and shut the door. You're not in the subconscious anymore. The subconscious is where you get the memory. 
you're not going to get it from your conscious. Otherwise, you'd have it already, right? You've thought long and hard over this because obviously this has been coming up and bothering you and creating shit ton of problems. So your your analytical mind really like is at the end, like I'm done. Go back into the feeling, meaning the sensations, not not the emotion. It's sadness, and I have to cry and feel sad. Yes, that. But go back into the sensations that will guide you into the emotion, which is the sad, anger, fear. Those three emotions are the three roots of all the emotions, fear, anger, and sadness. Sit in that, be in that state of being of inner listening, and then ask the question from there. Like Teal says, literally, like ask the question to your body, heavy, black, spacious, whole. When was the last time I felt this way? Because you can catch yourself thinking, I wonder when it was. I wonder when I was. We all do that. Of course I do that. We all do that. Why wouldn't we? Right? We have this great thing called memory, right? (laughs) Well, mine's not so great, but maybe yours is better. (laughs) But you know, you can like use it. And of course we're going to use it because that's what we're used to doing. Okay. So remember the step before when was the first time I felt this way is when was the last time I felt this way? Do more of that. Because when was the last time I felt this way is so actually validating. Like you are you can actually be on board with that. Oh yeah, that was yesterday. And then go back a little bit. Try to come up with three, minimum three. In the completion process, you're only asked to do one. So if you're bouncing out of the emotion, then maybe use that as an indication that you need more actual proof in your body that you get to go here, which is that this is a pattern in your life. You need to feel validated, physically, literally feel validated. Okay, when did I feel that Um, before that? And when did I feel that before that? And when did I feel that before that? Because it it, it helps you see the pattern. It makes you realize, oh my God, this came up then? It makes you realize you're not crazy. How to do it is to, your your brain is going to go, is going to think of a memory, right? Then you want to feel... You need to sort of compare screenshots of emotions. So here's how you feel right now (laughs) on this side. Holding my phone, so I only want it. Then you say, okay, here's how I, I, it was kind of like this feeling. Because remember the question is, when when did it feel like this last time? Not when was the situation the same? When was another time someone yelled at me for doing something they thought was wrong? No, it's when, when did I feel this way last? Could be a completely different scenario. And then you take that feeling and feel it in your body. And it, it's, it's like an emotional screenshot. Screenshot that feeling. You know, oh, it's in my stomach. It feels like, bit, bit, bit. It, it sounds like, jit, jit, jit. it looks like, bup, bup, bup. okay, boom, I got it. Ha, it's a screenshot. <laughs> then come to now. And then compare them side by side. Go from one to the next super validating. That's the solution to when (laughs) problem four of when the brain is like trying to go off and is going off into like, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. So you got four reasons that you won't be able to go into a memory. Again, one is the inability to feel emotion in general. Negative emotion is bad. We don't feel that. Let's positive ourselves immediately as soon as we can or cope or distract. Two, being in the feeling signature, but not dropping into that vulnerable part of what is it that I want here? (laughs) And then three is a protect yourself, keeping you from that actual memory. And then number four was when we're feeling too, like we're, we're very analytical people and we try to go back using our brain. That's a kind of a simple solution, tapping right back into your body again. And until next time, you guys stay magical. Love from Portugal. 